Okay, thank you, Randy. And Randy, whenever you get the slip and you're ready to go, stop me and then our, or just hold it up. And then when we get to our next break and what we're talking about, I will be glad to pause so we can hear the result of the vote. So as you came in, uh, hopefully that you saw a 2022 annual report document. And those are right by the doors there in the back of the auditorium. I would encourage you, if you haven't already, to grab one. Bob Johnson's holding some up. And if you would, uh, if you would like to grab one of those, I'm going to put a few slides on the screen, but I'm mostly going to be speaking directly from that annual report. And with that, it says 2022 report, but as I was working through that, uh, we're going to be talking about 2022, we're going to be talking about this year, and we're also going to be talking about 2021 there. So with this, if you have a question about what I'm sharing, I will make sure to stop in between uh, each section as we go through it. So please just hold it until I ask for questions. Maybe write it down if you're like me and you'll probably forget it three minutes after you think of it. But with that, this is what happens every time we do one of these. So here's a little story. Every single time we do one of these, uh, I have a collection of all of the attendance numbers that come in. And so, you know, I can record those in my computer and leave them for record just so I don't forget something or don't forget one down the road or, or something like that. And so uh, Scott Bowder and Ray Jacobs, they take the numbers every single week and then I can put it in my computer and then we have a database of all the numbers there. And without fail, no matter what I do, every single year, there's like one week that I'm missing. And I say that to say, this is the numbers with one week from last year that are out and three from the, from the previous year that are out. But I don't think that that skews the numbers at all, and you can see that note there. But when you're OCD about this stuff like me, it drives you up a wall because you're sitting there trying to get all the numbers and all the data and have everything exactly, exactly accurate and you're missing that one week that you search your whole office for and you can't find. So it's close, but I don't think that those not being in there, as you'll see the note, really is going to skew the average when it comes to our attendance. So the first thing I wanna draw your attention to is actually on the last page of the document there where it says, online and in-person attendance comparison 2022 or 2020 to 2022. Now, with that, I think I should actually change that because I believe we've got some 2023 in there as well. And, <clears throat> excuse me, with the comparison there, that's another thing that bugs me. I print all these out and then I see an error on it that I do. But, uh, you will see there that there is a big orange line that says in-person total there and it goes to zero and that's the time where COVID hit and you will see from that data then that really we've come back to a point now where we're basically at our pre-COVID numbers that's one of the things that I'm going to share with you but with that our reach as a church has grown our numbers of a church have grown but we're going to get into some of the details regarding that but when we look specifically at 2022, I'm going to share with you up front that some of the numbers for that year are skewed a little bit in that if you look back and think about the beginning of 2022, as I was looking at the totals for that year, there were still quite a few people that were not regularly attending church here at that time. In fact, even within the last few months, we've had some folks that have come back for the first time or recently since COVID-19. And so that information is going to skew our numbers a little bit. Uh, there were still quite a few people gone during that time. We were still about 100 shy of what we've been this year for attendance at that early part in 2022. In fact, we really didn't start hitting our stride again to like pre-2022 numbers until about the summer of 2022. So when you think of COVID when it hit, it was about a year and a half later before we were getting regular attendance numbers for the most part again. But with that, we're also going to see that our attendance numbers for Delaware Bible Church are all over the place from week to week sometimes. So for example, if you go and you look at on the first page, the third table down, it's got average in-person attendance. 
And I've rounded those figures there for 2021, 2022, and 2023. And with those numbers, you will see that our total so far in uh, 2023, yeah, that's looking like or a little bit higher than what we had back in 2020, eight weeks, nine weeks before COVID, when we were around 388 people. Now, with that number, just looking at it, one of our highest weeks so far this year was the second week of the year, was January the 8th, where we had 454 people in attendance. The following week, though, we had a difference of 78 people attending our church, so nearly a quarter difference, 25%, just in one week, from January the 8th to January the 15th. And that's a number, and that's something that you're going to see a regular occurrence around here, where we have a lot of people that are in and out, and as well, we often see when we're down some that the stream numbers can uh, go up, or sometimes they'll stay about the same. And it's about impossible to be able to tell exactly what to take from stream numbers because we count devices. And a device can mean one person, like me sitting there watching the stream, or it can mean an entire family of four, six, ten people watching it. But we're mostly focused on our numbers here in the room. And with our numbers in the room, our church has grown, but we still don't have some people back. Uh, we still have about 10% of our congregation prior to COVID that would still say that they are attending Delaware Bible Church, but they are not doing so in the room. Now, the majority of those people we would consider to be a shut-in at this point, uh, where they are no longer attending services here, but we're still trying to shepherd them and connect with them. So there are still people in that mix, but as well as you go to the bottom part there of the first page, you will see, and this is one of the big blessings that we've seen, that our 9 o'clock service averages are really close to our 1045 service averages. Our numbers there have continued to grow for that 9 a.m. service. And if you remember, there was a time where we were saying, hey, we need some more people to go to 9 o'clock. We want to help get the second service to where it's got some space in there. And praise the Lord, although we can continue to grow there, we're seeing, at least adult-wise, a very similar number there within that. And it's something that we're very happy for, and it's something that we're seeing a lot of for newer people that are coming in. So for a lot of us, we've kind of been conditioned to Delaware Bible Church's main service being at 1045. And that's because that's how it was for, for many years. You know, we had the 8 o'clock service, and there was about 40 people that attended that. And then we had the other service that was attended by around 300 people. Well, now that's changed. And as that's changed, we've seen more of a split there, which is something that we wanted to see there. And praise the Lord, the numbers are remaining the same basically on average, and that when we average all the numbers out, those totals there for 2022 are basically what we're seeing, and it looks very similar here for where this year that we're currently in. Now, when it comes then to our children's classes, when it comes to our adult classes, that's on the next page there, where you will see that pretty much steadily the average number of children that we have in our Sunday school classes, and that's going to be from birth to all the way up through high school, it's going to remain pretty much the same. We're one less for this year, but again, we're two months in for this year. With that, though, you will see that we have seen an increase this year as compared to last year in our adult classes and we're getting much closer to our regular Sunday school totals for adult classes uh, throughout the year. Now in future years, one thing I'd like to track more is life groups, and I'd like to track our baptism numbers, the number of folks that have said that they've trusted in Christ as Savior, and that's not something that we've really done for this, but it would be something that would be good for us to record, and today gives me a good way to start doing that because we've seen two baptisms today. But as we look at these numbers here, the next one that I want to draw your attention to is one that I hope we can just all say praise the Lord for, and that is the 2022 general fund giving. Now, as we look at this, I can't give you an exact correlation to our budget year because, remember, our fiscal year runs from August to July, and that coincides with our school fiscal year. 
But with that, you will see that the total that was given to our general fund in the January to December calendar year was $19,740.46 more than the previous year. And since COVID has happened time and time again, we have seen the church continue to stand up and give, and we have been blessed with a surplus in our budget each year. And we just have to say praise the Lord for that. Through the sacrificial giving of our people, through what God is doing here, and we are averaging right around $73,000 per month in giving here at the church. We've been able to make all of our expenses. We've been able to contribute more towards our missions funds. We've been able to take care of the projects that we've needed to do around here. And we just say praise the Lord for that as people are faithfully contributing towards what's going on here. Now, I didn't do a comparison for that for the first two months of this year because I only have the January financials so far, and the elders haven't approved those yet. So those will come in future meetings. But the other thing that I want to share with you is our capital campaign. And this is, again, something that I just want to say praise the Lord for. As we look at our total $4 million budget, or $4 million goal, I should say, for the campaign, we already have nearly half of that over $1.8 million given and over $2.5 million pledged. Now, when it comes to those numbers, uh, recently we had a man in who I had connected with uh, from another church who had run seven capital campaigns. And he met with the elder board and uh, he was kind of giving us an evaluation of how the campaign's going, how things are looking, and he had much expertise in this in doing seven of these previously. And he really gave us a, just a great note of congratulations and admiration in the way that our church family and our school family has responded to our capital campaign. Uh, in total, I don't have the exact numbers here for how much the church has given. Jelaine's been out this past week, so I wasn't able to connect with her on that. But I believe of that number, about 1.8 of that, is church people that have made that commitment when our total that we were told that we could raise originally was around 2.2 million so you all as a church family have answered the call have given sacrificially and are continuing to along with our general fund giving and we're very thankful for that we're very thankful that as he shared with us often you see a dip there and we haven't along with that i talked to jane minor our head of school and she shared that of the school families, 50% of families have made a contribution towards the campaign. Now, for perspective with that, we have 40% of the students that are joining us that are receiving educational choice. So they are receiving some type of state-sponsored aid to be able to attend Delaware Christian School. So for a lot of them, they might likely not be able to give the amount that some of the other families would be able to give, but they are contributing. Meaning only 10% of our school families, we can say, might be eligible to, but haven't given a gift towards it. And as well, when we have our school families there, you're dealing with a much different clientele than you are with, school, with church families. For many of them, it's going to be younger families who are paying tuition for their kids in school. They have their own churches with their own capital campaigns. You've probably seen several other churches around town that have been building or are planning on building soon. And so we are very thankful for all the gifts that have been given towards this campaign and how the Lord is continuing to uh, just provide for our needs there. Now, over the next month, we are... Uh, committed very specifically to looking at corporate opportunities. And so particularly on the school end, they are working towards uh, having some folks go out and seek corporate donations for that and see where the Lord would lead with that. And then the elders are going to consider next steps for that. And so as we look at these different things, the final thing that I want to share with you just briefly is that as you look at the other stats there, I've shared just for uh, for fun and for your edification, our podcast ministry, we have had a total of over 5,500 downloads to that ministry, and that's not including all the downloads that we've received on our YouTube channel, on our 
different videos that we've posted as well as social media and the Lord continues to grow our reach that way. True story that I think you'll find interesting. Uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, I've been teaching the Modern Cults and World Religion Sunday School class. And as I've been teaching that class, uh, each week I edit the videos that goes on for that and for Paul Wright's class. And those videos normally have enough uh, people watching them that it merits us doing it. It's normally like around another Sunday school class of folks here in the church uh, that are watching that or other folks in the community. And so I posted the first of a couple talks there on Jehovah's Witnesses. And this is not a heavily edited video. It's literally me taking the camera, putting it there in my PowerPoint slides and me talking and answering questions and giving the lecture. And from that that we've posted on YouTube, we have seen over 8,000 people watch that. We've had so many people watching that that I had to turn off the comments because we were getting ones that we wouldn't be in theological alignment with with some of those things. But the Lord continues to grow our reach there. And it's a God thing, clearly, because as I shared, we weren't doing anything fancy there. God was just working as we proclaim the truth. And I think because of that, well, why did it that uh, get so many views? Well, I think it's because when you look at the doctrine of what those folks believe, they're told, you believe in what the Watchtower Society shares, that one little group and their doctrine. And as they go and they search for truth, they see a church like ours that's saying, no, this is what the Bible says, and that's attractive to them. And they're viewing it, and they're checking it out. So God continues to grow our reach through these things. So I'm going to share a couple other points here, and then I'm going to uh, open it up for questions. But so as we look at this annual report here, and as we go through it, some big takeaways. Number one, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for his goodness to our church and the sacrificial giving of so many of you who have just blessed our ministry where when we have finance committee meetings and budget meetings, we get to deal with surpluses and adding money for ministry, not seeing where things are cut so far. We get to vote tonight about adding pastors, not, well, you know what Pastor Scott likes to talk about. <laughs> Number two, our 9 o'clock service continues to grow, and that's primarily through new families joining us. So if you want a good chance to meet some new families here at DBC, they're coming to both services, but I would check out 9 o'clock there, as that's where we're seeing the greatest influx of new people join us where they like that 9 o'clock service. Number three, and this is the biggest thing that I want to harp on here, is attendance-wise, the biggest issue that's plaguing Delaware Bible Church is the same thing that we've been dealing with post-COVID, and that's of consistency. People are in and out. Now, some of that can be a good thing. For example, if someone's sick, it's probably a good idea for them not to be at church, right? And live streaming gives them an opportunity to be able to be a part of the service. Similarly, at other times, folks... You know, it may not work for them that day. They're elderly, and it's just a day where they can't get up and be at church. It, it gives the opportunity for them to do that. But consistently, we see our attendance do this, as you can see on those graphs there, of being up and down, up and down, up and down. And so my encouragement is one of the best things that we can do here for our church is to hold each other accountable when we don't see each other. Maybe we can just make a phone call to someone that we just kind of don't see as much. Hey, how are you doing? Uh, that 10% of folks that haven't joined us back in person yet, but still say that they are members or regular attenders of our church, if we know them, let's give them a call. Let's go through the directory. And by the way, a lot of pictures have been updated in that. Thank you, Marilyn Tainer. Thank you, Ken Kinzel, for taking those pictures, and thank all of you for submitting them. But go through there and just say, I've missed that guy for a while. Let me call them. And let's work on that of consistency here within our attendance for church. Number four, we continue to see folks outside of our walls utilizing our online resources. That's folks inside the church and outside of the church. So we'll continue to focus our time on live streaming, on podcasting, on our YouTube videos, and the things that we're doing there. We'll continue to invest in them. And we're thankful for those 
who are serving to, to make those things happen so that we can have church and we can do these things. Number five, I would just encourage you to, that's supposed to say pray, not please. Another one that just drives me nuts, ones like that. Pray for God to provide the additional money to complete our capital campaign. You all have been so generous in your giving there. And now we're just waiting for God to do something that only God can do there, to provide for the needs. We've seen it before. When it came to the remodel in this room, I can tell you the story about someone coming into my office. And when we needed that final check, they provided it for us to be able to do this remodel. And we believe that he's going to do that again. And so we would ask you to consider prayer, prayerfully uh, what the elders may do for next steps there. All right moment to think about questions randy's got the vote so randy if you want to come up here and read it and then i'll be glad to answer any questions and then i've just got a couple more things to share with you okay so we have the official vote we had uh, 110 uh, people signed in and uh, we needed a 77 for a quorum so we got there um, the results were 102 yet uh, approved three rejections, four abstentions, and uh, one was not turned in. So as a, a, a church, we've moved to uh, bring on Pastor Stabanis, and uh, I think it's going to be a great, great addition. So move. All right, praise the Lord. Questions on anything that I have shared? All right, if you come up with anything else, uh, we'll have another chance there at the end. Just a couple other things that are going on that I want to share with you regarding capital campaign phase two. That's the one that we're currently working on, so a reminder of our phases. Phase one was the storage building that is out by the gym. That is completely done. We have, been mo or we have moved into that, and praise the Lord, we're already starting to use up some of that quite a bit of that space there. Uh, there's shelving in there. Uh, Jonathan Komansky, our maintenance guy, has been taking care of so many of the needs there, and we are thankful to have that space there. And men, be looking for, when the spring comes and it gets warm again, an invitation to come do some demolition on those buildings out back there, as we will be sharing that with you. But you've seen outside there that the brick has come in for that, that that's been on. And Lord willing, it's our goal to have the cross back up before Easter for that. We have to wait so long for it to cure and set and do those things. But a couple other things with that project. One thing that you can't really see, although I did see a couple of you peeking in there to look. This is going to be the new doorway that you see in the commons that they recently cut out for that space. It's going to have two doors there. And that beam right there in the middle is going to be where the... Uh, the wall goes through for the multi-purpose room there. This is kind of an inside look of it here, and you can better see that steel beam across there. It's a little under 1,800 square feet, and again, the reason why it's that size is that is the largest that we could go without having to add sprinklers to this entire building, which would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars for us to be able to do that, if not more than that. So that is the reason why that space was chosen. And again, the reason why it was chosen to be done there and not in the courtyard space was all the issues that we continued to find for the square footage that we would get in the courtyard that would be much closer to one big classroom instead of two big classrooms or one super big common space. With that, uh, you can also see here that Again, this is the picture that we've shown you of what the room is kind of going to look like. This is a rendering of it that Pastor Scott, Pastor Hintz, and I saw at the Basics Conference uh, back in May of last year. And it is one room or, or one large room where we have that divider there where you can then separate it into two rooms. And at the time that those buildings are demolished in the back and the modular building is moved from the school, that can be used as two classrooms for the school during that time. And then when you 
works or when you look at it for all the other multi-purpose ch uh, church uses we're going to have I mean from youth group on Wednesday nights to dinners at the church to funeral meals to uh, Bible studies to Sunday school classes there to overflow for Sunday mornings there are so many different uses that we will have with this space with that I want to show you uh, and I will have the actual versions of it up here which I'll keep up here at for after. We wanted to do the best that we could to mimic the current design of the commons for that. So the wall color is going to be the same as in the commons. The cove base, the dark brown trim, is going to be the same that's in the commons. The only thing that's going to be different is the fabric on the partition wall, which is the, the small rectangle there at the bottom. It's going to look a little bit different there. But then we also went with a carpet that's going to be done in uh, planks in a herringbone style that's going to look very similar there uh, or it's going to be what you see there on the screen and it's going to be one that's nice and dark so it's going to hide a lot of stains and it's going to hide a lot of chips from youth group and all those different things when we have meals and funeral dinners and all the different stuff that's going to happen in that space so that being said as we look at that space also here in just two weeks during spring break we're going to see the commons flooring is going to be uh, taken up. That floor that we had there, we were told when we got it was exactly the floor that we needed for that space. And it had, if you've seen, some areas where it's come up there over time. And we actually have a full warranty on that flooring and on the flooring in the twos and threes rooms next to it. And both of those are gonna be completely replaced during that time. The flooring in the twos and threes room is going to be pretty much exactly what you see in the commons, except it's going to be a, a different uh, company that's doing it. When we, it's going to be a glue down, so we won't have those issues in the recall. And what you see there on the screen, this is going to be the tile. It's going to be a tile look that's going to be out there in the commons. This is all. This is going to be the size of one. That for some reason, they gave it to me in two pieces. But I'll have all these out there uh, you can look at after the service is over. I'm sorry, I got the crews involved. There's no arguing on paint colors. It's been decided and it's done. So uh, I had the crew decide that and very thankful for their help on that. A couple other things that I will share with you is that as we look to this summer, it is again going to be an expensive and busy summer here at Delaware Bible Church. Currently, uh, we have the handicap ramp, which is next to the school entrance and the connector there. That, after I believe being put in when that connector was put in, I want to say that was over 20 years ago, the parts that make it work, the computer controls, the, e the elevator. Listen, I've been, I've been having a lot of verbal clutter lately, and uh, it's getting worse and worse here. If I'm this bad at 32, I'm sorry for you guys in about 10 more. Man. The elevator. So we are looking, or that has, the replacement for that has been purchased. As is everything right now, we have a price on it, and two weeks later, it goes up about 15%, because that's kind of the world we live in right now. Thankful it's not 20%, as a lot of other things were. But the computer controls are now obsolete. We couldn't get anyone to uh, get us uh, different ones for that. We recently purchased that new one. Lord willing, it will be installed by the end of the month. And there may be a Sunday, we are not sure at this point, but there may be a Sunday where we have to use that entrance to get into the church due to construction on the front end. And so we want to make sure that we time it so that we can do both and there's no issues there for us for those who need to use that elevator to come up into church. The parking lot is going to have two entrances now as you currently come in and see. The difference is going to be they're going to be extended. And so we will have a new parking lot plan that's going on this summer as that parking lot is resealed and restriped and those lines are widened so that you can get a car in and out more comfortably for that. With that, we're looking at new HVAC controls because, you know, we just keep running into HVAC issues around here. It's just kind of par for the course. 
but the controls for the 200 building when that was built are no longer uh, being able to be updated anymore. And so we have a project there that we're going to be doing this summer. Our gym floor, it's time for it to be completely taken down to bare wood. That is going to be completely redone this summer. And as well, we have our normal floor care and other jobs that are going to be done over the summer. So it will, again, be a bit another busy summer here with facilities projects. And those are just things outside of the normal things that we're doing, the normal painting rooms, patching walls, doing all the stuff that we do. So with anything that I've shared there on upcoming projects, on the capital campaign, on funding, on anything at all that I've shared, do you have any questions? All right. Well, I'm going to close our time in prayer, and I'll be out in the commons after. If you do have any questions on those things, I'll put these sample charts out there as well. Pastor Scott, do you have anything else? Yeah. Yeah, one, one thing that you guys don't often see that we see a lot during the day around here is the blessing of uh, just having good staff people around, and particularly we're talking about uh, Jonathan Klemanski, our maintenance guy. Uh, I work with Jonathan very closely. We meet several times a week. And previously to Jonathan, we had a dream team in maintenance with Bill Sinzinger and Tyler Alexander, Tyler who goes here to church, that were serving in a part-time role. Well, Bill was retiring from that, and Tyler was not interested in taking that on in an additional role, and we knew that it was going to be a short-time thing for Tyler as he's got his uh, own rental business. And then the Lord brought us Jonathan. And again, if you ever get to see him and meet him around the, the day around here, he is a wonderful blessing to our ministry. He's a team player. You might have heard that name because he served as the maintenance director, or at, as the overall director at the Salvation Army camp when it was in town for 18 years. And it's a wonderful blessing to work with him. And he's helping so much on a lot of these capital campaign things and the bit maintenance needs. He's doing the floor care plan for the summer. We're really thankful for him and uh, for just the great people that God continues to bring our way, from Jim Stevanus to more that we'll share with you in the future. So let's close our time in prayer together. God, we thank you tonight. We thank you for our church. Lord, we thank you for just the blessing it is to be a part of this fellowship and how you continue to provide abundantly and beyond all of our needs. Lord, not only do you help us to meet budget, but you help us to go over it every single year. Lord, not only have you uh, graciously provided so much from, from our church family and our school families for our capital campaign, Lord, you've allowed the work to begin, and we just pray that you would do something that only you can do in providing the remaining money that we need for this capital campaign. Lord, as we look for, to next steps for that, give our elders, our school board, our leadership much wisdom. Lord, as we consider this evening, we rejoice and thank you for the wonderful news of Pastor Jim and him being able to join us here on staff and being able to share your word and its truth with so many here in our community. Lord, as we depart here this evening, help us to continue to be committed not only to the local church, but your work here in our community. Help us to be lights for you, and may you be glorified in all that we do. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You are dismissed.